hey, better sax players. To... Actually, I'll... hold on a second. I forgot something. Be right back. So you guys have been asking me a lot to get the tenor saxophone off of Amazon and unbox it. So today I'm unboxing and testing out the laid tenor saxophone that I bought off of Amazon for $420. Uh, I'm going to play it up against my professional tenor saxophone and see how it compares. You know, we started out, I did the alto saxophone. I bought it for 270 bucks off of Amazon. It turned out to be surprisingly good. Then I went and got the soprano saxophone, and that turned out to be pretty good as well, despite a few mechanical issues uh, that I was able to fix without too much trouble. Now we're going to see if there's some level of consistency with these saxophones or if I just got lucky with the first two. Let's go. That's not a good sign. The G sharp key. I'm gonna put it back on, but already we're off to a pretty bad start. All right, so this is what you get in the box. Um, I'm assuming the other ones don't always ship with the G sharp key detached. Um, let's try on the gloves. Maybe, maybe the gloves will be good. You know, you can tell a lot about the quality of a Chinese saxophone from the gloves included with it. So, uh, I really don't like these gloves. Ah, look at this. What interesting colors. This one does not come with the mute. It does have two polishing cloths, but no cleaning swab. Weird. G-sharp key, loose, floating around in the bag, not in playable condition as it arrived to me. I could tell there's a lot of problems. Looked like it probably got knocked around quite a bit during shipping. That's what happens when it's not in a quality case. It doesn't even survive the shipment to you. I'm gonna spend like half an hour trying to get this into playing condition. If I don't get it to work, send it back. <laughs> Pliers. This is more of a job for a hammer. took me about five minutes and I got that um, all those keys on there and, and working and there's another major issue the C key is hitting on the key guard now I can see it looks like it's been smashed down all this damage has clearly happened during the transport because the case that it comes with is terrible okay so what I'm gonna do is take it off I managed to fix that. It took me about another five minutes. Okay, let's see how the neck fits into the tenon. Okay, that's actually not a terrible fit. Look at this. The octave key is, is wide open. Simple fix, just a little bend. If I fix this instrument and get it ready to play and then go and put it back in the same case and carry it around for a week, it's likely to be damaged again. So these instruments really have 
bad cases. If you want to save some money on an instrument, okay, fine, but please put it in a better case so it doesn't constantly get damaged and smashed. Okay, let's go find out how it plays. Maybe we'll be surprised. big relief. <laughs> So I'd love to hear what you guys think. Leave me a comment below and tell me what you heard, what you think of the sound of this saxophone compared to my Yanagisawa professional instrument. I'll tell you what I think. If this one were in better working condition, you know, it wasn't, I didn't have such uh, bad leaks down in the right hand, it would play okay. There were a few spots where my hands were not entirely comfortable with the positioning of the keys, particularly the D palm key. You know, these are minor things that I would get used to within a matter of, of minutes, really. So aside from these leaks in the right hand keys, you know, in the part of the horn that was sealing well, the sound is pretty good, I have to say. I checked it with a tuner and it plays reasonably well in tune. Although I did run into an issue where I could only push my mouthpiece into a certain point and then it stopped and I felt like I needed to be able to push it in a little bit further. I think this looks like a decent saxophone. It feels like a halfway decent saxophone, at least as good as the other ones from this company that I reviewed previously. I really hesitate to tell you it's okay to go ahead and buy one of these. I have to say when I first opened it up and parts were falling off it, I was like, oh, this is gonna be terrible. Um, but then once I got it into somewhat playing condition and I played a few notes on it, I said, once again, I was surprised that it, it sounded very saxophone-like. So let me take this opportunity to go over a few things that you get or you should get with more expensive instruments. The things that instruments in this price range are missing. So the number one thing is a quality case. When you spend a bit more on an instrument, you can expect there to be a decent working usable case that comes with it. The one that this instrument and the other laid instruments comes with is really the minimum level of protection. And a big problem is the horn moves around inside the case. So for example, I don't know what happened when that thing was being shipped, but if it's getting knocked around and inside the case the horn is moving, well, you can understand why the low C key guard was bent and preventing the key from opening. And you can understand why this brace that holds all of these bell key rods on was bent out of adjustment and I had to hammer it back into place. The next thing you should expect from a slightly more expensive saxophone is better quality control when it comes out of the factory. The instrument should have been packed better leaving the factory. If they're gonna put it in such a cheap case, then put some more padding, put some more packaging material in that box to prevent that sort of damage. At least when the customer opens the box, that the saxophone will play for them. Also, that better quality control right out of the factory should ensure that you get a saxophone without leaks in it when you open the case. And finally, a more expensive saxophone is gonna come with some sort of 
guarantee. The company who makes it is going to stand by their product and say, if you have any problem whatsoever with this instrument, when you receive it, send it back to us and we'll take care of it and we'll fix it for you. Of course, all of these things are going to cost a bit more money. And I don't know if it's fair to expect everything for the price of $420. I would say this one really is a gamble. If you get something like this, you might end up with an instrument like I got today and you're just going to have to send it back. Uh, if you get lucky, like I did with the Alto, uh, you get a great instrument for a, a pretty low price. As I said in my reviews of the laid Alto and Soprano, this stuff is really at the bottom tier. If you can afford to pay more, you really should get yourself something a bit better. So I'm in for about $1,000 worth of cheap Chinese saxophones at the moment. This one here I'm going to send back to Amazon because it was not in an acceptable condition. I won't charge them for the repair I did. Uh, but I just wanted to say that the reason I'm doing these videos and looking for these really cheapest saxophones on Amazon is because so many people have asked me, uh, you know, is it okay to buy the super cheap saxophone? I really want to play saxophone, but I don't have a lot of money to spend on one. So I felt compelled to try these instruments out for myself so I can give some sort of answer. I hope you got some value out of watching this video and my other videos. If you did, please click the thumbs up button. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and get yourself subscribed. I make new videos like this every single week. Also be sure to follow Better Sax on Instagram and Facebook where I share tons of bonus content daily. Thanks for watching and see you again very soon in another video.